Mr. Vicente. I don't know if he's online. Mr. Vicente Gomez. Very much, um, my brother Fakeba. I'm sorry I could not hear you audibly, but I trust you urging me to say something about the topic. Apparently, exactly. I, I trust Professor Barry has already touched actually what I was going to talk about. Language, a tool for socioeconomic development. Uh, we all know that definitely language itself is an economic resource. It's cultural resource. Language actually helps in the individual's identity. So um, to be honest, um, hearing from what Professor Barry has just mentioned, we all know, yes, there are languages spoken in this country, but there are some definitely that would be extinct maybe in the next 25 years. Why? Because those who are actually speaking them might have been definitely advanced in age. And before you know it, if they are gone, these languages would have gone definitely along with those people. There are people who are by Nunca, but they can't speak by Nunca. And they are categorized among other um, lang uh, 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 groups because they are more or less speaking those languages of those groups more than their own languages or can't even understand this. Now, we talk about us bearing the surnames of our parents, but our languages, mind you, are those of our mothers because it is the mother who gives birth. And it's the modest language that most of the time the child speaks. So these are things also we don't actually um, maybe think about. I may be Gomez, but if my, brother, my, my, my mother is Jaju, I may end up speaking maybe Jola or Karonika. But, and people will be wondering how comes he is Gomez and he cannot speak Manjago. It's mother song, mind you. And it's the mothers that actually are the first teachers of any child. So these are things we should bear in mind. But all said and done, it is important for our national languages to be taught in school. Oh, sorry, our indigenous languages. Whether we started at the regional level, just as uh, Professor ba uh, Barry has just mentioned, or we actually try to look at one or two of them to be taught based on maybe the number of speakers in those areas, I definitely believe it is important because without that, our sustainability in any development can't be achieved. Now, when you talk about sustainable development, sustain, let's look at the word sustenance. You must start from the present and cater for the future. So if we are thinking about our development to be sustainable, we need to look at what we are doing now, including our own indigenous languages. That is why more than ever before, we should definitely ensure that our indigenous languages, whether it is going to be five or six of them, are taught in schools to help our young ones perform beyond the language barrier that is giving some of them challenges to learn in school. Some of our kids up to grade three, four, we accuse them of not being able to maybe read and write. But if you had given them the opportunity to do that in their own indigenous languages, you may marvel at their performance. So we are the ones who are limiting our children. It's like you and I and many others on this webinar being asked today to speak Chinese. We can't speak it. We must be taught. Just like Dutch or French or any other language, maybe uh, Professor Barry and Lamin may be able to speak French or Arabic. Some of us actually may be able to recite certain things in Arabic language, but we will not be able to read it may not be even able to translate it, but of course we would have committed it to memory. So it is important that our young ones, even those of us who are old, definitely are taught in our indigenous languages. We used to have adult literary, literary education in English. For our older people in those days, we can have adult literacy, uh, literacy education in our indigenous languages for us and many others who would be able to teach these one, the young ones these languages. And above all, our learning institutions, tertiary institutions for that matter, the university, the college, and other institutions should have language institutes so that we will have many people graduating from there who will be able to go back to the classrooms and teach our own young ones, our children, 
our own indigenous language. Without any language institute or language policy, our quest for sustainable development would be difficult because we will have people who can speak very good English, but when they go back to their communities to work as development workers, they are reaching out to people who will not be able to understand them if they speak in English. And the best way to definitely bring about development is the bottom-up approach. And if we believe in the bottom-up approach of development, we should not leave language outside of it. Thank you very much, uh, my brother. Thank you very much, my brother, once again. What makes language an important component of development? It's like telling me why is language is more important. Language, we know definitely uh, eases communication. And language is identity. A language actually brings out and about the culture of the people. And culture, we all know, well, it is the way of life of a people. So if people's way of life is culture, language is part of their way of life. That's what they identify with. That's what identifies them. So to ask why is language is important in development, I think it's a given. We all know. And there is no sustainable development without people being part of it. There is no sustainable development without the bottom-up approach. And the bottom-up approach of development will include the people. And the people are those that actually you're going to work with, work for, and at the end of the day, definitely need in whatever objective you want to achieve. So if we're talking about language being important, we're looking at it from the cultural perspective, from the social perspective, from the mental perspective, psychological perspective, even economic perspective, it's very important. Now, uh, you realize that um, many people would always need interpreters when actually they are at work. Mind you, those interpreters are making huge sums of money from their job interpretation. And it saddens me to see that many of us, especially in the Gambia, can only speak either our own mother tongue plus another indigenous language. Few will definitely stand out who are able to speak more than five individual uh, indigenous languages. At most, for some, it may just be three. So you would realize that when people, let's say, who are used to a particular language dialect move from one area to another, it may affect them in the sense that they would not be able to communicate with those people they are going to work with. And they end up what? One, asking for somebody to come and assist them in ensuring that that which they want to pass across is actually done. So you'd realize that the person they are bringing would either be paid for that service or they may not directly be able to more or less transmit their messages of development to those people they're working with. Now, sustainable development is considered as a development that meets right, the present without compromising the future. So if sustainable development meets the present, and doesn't compromise the future, it means language is key in this. And I would urge that definitely we encourage those who are interested in taking out development work in all aspects, all spheres, all sectors of government to be able to speak their mother tongue and two other indigenous languages so that it will definitely help us a great deal in ensuring that our development objectives are met wherever we go, as well as definitely cut the costs of hiring maybe more than one person when you could have only need, uh, when one person would have been needed in carrying out the job, all because they are more or less hampered or affected as a result of not being able to speak that other language that is actually spoken in the country, but in another region or community. So language definitely, it's very important and that's why you and i are communicating because if i were to speak to you in mandinka you will understand <laughs> if i were to speak to you in fula you would understand but 
maybe if I were to speak to you in Manjago, you'll have a challenge. So you would not be able to understand me, even though uh, I, I may have ideas to share with you, but you would need an interpreter to be able to hear maybe that which I want to share with you. So it's really important that uh, we encourage, promote, and definitely popularize the use of our own indigenous languages in our own development work. It helps a great deal. And I would suggest that definitely among the criteria for hiring, recruitment, especially within the Gambia, in our country, in, well, in Africa, we encourage people who are interested in taking up such jobs or jobs to be able to speak their indigenous language and to others, because that will definitely help a great deal in the development work. So um, to be honest, um, language is key and we all know it. And as I said, it's not just the spoken language, not just oral, we also have definitely the sign language. And this is where most of us are found wanting. Sign language is key because not every other person definitely is able to communicate with us through verbal communication. So you realize that those that are definitely, you know, differently able, when they go to hospitals, they find it difficult to be understood or to understand us because we are actually using a language they cannot understand. And the language they are able to understand is sign language. So I would encourage us to ensure that if we really want to have sustainable development, let's think about others who definitely need to also be part of our development process. And these are the people who use sign language. So language definitely is key in development. And uh, it is important that um, we have language institutes in our tertiary institutions, starting with the University of the Gambia and maybe the uh, online university in the Gambia or any other tertiary institution so that those of us interested in indigenous languages can enroll, register, and actually start learning these languages. If we do not have these institutes of uh, languages there, it will be difficult for us to start the teaching of our own indigenous languages at nursery level, at primary level, at high school level, and even tertiary level. Because for you to definitely teach, you must be taught. And yes, I may be able to speak Mandinka, I may be able to speak Wolof, I may be able to speak Manjago, I may be able to understand Karoninka, Jola, Fula, you name it, but I may not be able to read and write in those indigenous languages. And it is important that we start honestly, you know, the teaching of these languages in our universities, in our tertiary institutions, at certificate level, diploma level, and then before you know it, at degree level. Otherwise, others outside of the Gambia would definitely be teaching these subjects. And tomorrow they'll be teaching you Fula, they'll be teaching you Olaf, they'll be teaching you Mandinka, they'll be teaching you Manjago, even though that's your own mother tongue, or it's an indigenous language in our own country. So before we will start paying dearly for some of these uh, uh, indigenous languages, uh, or studying some of these indigenous languages, it is better we start actually learning them. And sadly, there are some of these indigenous languages that many of us can't speak or don't understand, or they may be, actually they're even extinct. You go Maswanka, Maybe for some, they're just hearing that that's a language. By Nunca, some may just be hearing that it's a language. And these were actually languages spoken in this country. But because of time, you know, uh, with time, actually, well, few speakers of these languages are around, and some may actually be from those uh, ethnic groups, but are not able to speak them because those languages have not actually been promoted Nursed, nurtured, and they are now actually maybe more or less, if not extinct, but on the verge of extinction. And I believe we should not allow any language to die because if a language dies, the identity of the person dies along. And at the end of the day, where is the sustainability that we all ask for? 
or you are yearning for in our development process. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, my brother. Uh, how can the use of national languages enhance our national development? It's a given, honestly. We all know that um, our people are not bereft of ideas. They are not. And uh, whatever you and I uh, might have learned in science or in agri-science or any of these um, uh, disciplines, our people already know them in their own indigenous ways, in our But then when we actually stand in front of them and speak to them in English, it will be difficult for them to understand the concepts or speak to them in any other language other than an indigenous language of their own or of their understanding. It is honestly going to be difficult for them to easily understand the concept. Remember, we all agree that development is bottom up approach and we all so know that uh, if you really want to teach somebody you start from the known to the unknown and the known to most of us is our language anybody who actually is born the first contact most of the time is your parents uh, are your parents and it's your mother in particular so you will start learning how to speak through that now if a child is able to pick up those things at a very early age, tender age, formative age, and the person grows up with that in their own local, uh, sorry, indigenous language, you realize that when they grow old and now they have to learn another language other than the one they've already known or they've already learned, the concepts would not be familiar. But if if we were to use your own, their own indigenous language, it would be very easy. So people actually understand better or they are able to do things better when they are comfortable. And comfort is as a result of one's own identity, familiar territory, familiar ground. So uh, it is important that um, definitely we start doing some of the things we do using our own indigenous language to enhance our development. It is very key because people understand faster and better when you actually use examples within their own surrounding, within their own locality, that they always interact with daily, unlike bringing in something that now you would have to use examples of this or even use that instance for them to be able to grasp. And it's unlike something that they can easily touch see, feel, or have always been around or has always been around them. So it is really, really important for us to start the use of, I know they already been, well, our, some of our indigenous languages are being taught in our schools to particular levels, but it should go beyond the primary level to the secondary tertiary level. It's important. But again, as I said, it is one thing for us to actually have these you know, indigenous languages in our schools, but another thing for us to promote them. It is important that they are promoted so that we have a choice to do indigenous languages or foreign languages. And the best way to do that is to ensure that even at primary level, we should have institutes of language studies. It's important we have it there so that those who are interested at a very tender age to start learning their languages or start learning indigenous languages at that primary level, taking it to junior level, to senior, and then tertiary level, they will do that. And those who want to for study foreign languages can do that as well. So I think really we cannot wait. The wait has been too long and we can't continue giving excuses. Just as we train people to go and study languages or other disciplines, we should also start sending people to study definitely our indigenous languages, whether it is going to be here at home or abroad. Because I know that most of our these indigenous languages, or some of them, are being taught in some institutes of languages 
somewhere in the world. And those people will end up coming to teach us these languages when they may not know our culture much, may not even be able to speak our languages the way we do fluently, and may not actually easily identify with us because they are only there to earn a living, but not actually live that which you and I are actually experiencing or are living. So uh, definitely um, language we all know is key in development and the use of our own indigenous languages definitely in our developmental process will be very key in sustainability. And again, it will give people the confidence that they can do business, they can trade using our own indigenous languages. At the moment, trading and business at an official level definitely is accepted by the use of our own indigenous languages. But when it comes to at official level, that's where the challenge is. And that challenge has affected a lot of people who could have contributed so much to national development. But we must encourage, honestly, the, not only the use of these languages, but they must be promoted, they must be taught, and people should feel comfortable, definitely, using or speaking or doing business in our indigenous languages without anybody seeing it as if they are quote-unquote uneducated, they are not schooled, they are backward, they are local. No. Every language is important. Even some of the foreign languages we speak here, just as I'm doing right now, right? It's a global language because of its frequent usage. So if we start actually using our own indigenous languages, a lot of people will embrace it. And before you know it, it will be spoken somewhere in Cambodia, in the, um, Macedonia, in Sri Lanka, you name it, in South Africa, in you know uh, Venezuela, because they would have realized that it's a language that is taught and somebody somewhere who is interested in that language will come to learn about it and actually take it elsewhere. So it's important, definitely, that uh, we promote, encourage, and uh, start the use of our own indigenous languages in our development process. That is why I said it should be a requirement for anybody that is going to be employed you know, in the civil service or anywhere to speak their mother tongue and two other indigenous languages. But it should be at least three indigenous languages. At the moment, I'm not sure there's that requirement, except for some developmental, uh, uh, those actually in the development work who would always say, okay, for you to be able to pick up this job, you must speak at least maybe a local language or two local languages spoken in a particular area. You know, which shows you the importance of language. That is why they are asking for somebody who's able to speak an indigenous language added to whatever qualification they would have had. So language is very important. If people outside who are coming to the Gambia involved in our own development work are interested in our language and cultural studies before actually they redeploy those people to go and do any work in any community anywhere, know the importance. So who are we? not to actually even see that and take it as something serious. We know about it. The Peace Corps volunteers will never be redeployed to any community without them actually being taken through an induction program. And most of them, when they get to these communities, the first thing they do is to speak the language of the people. In fact, some of them would have changed their identities to, ma uh, to make sure that they become part and parcel of the community because they know the importance of language in development work, in development practice. So if those people are to know it, who are we not to know it and actually ensure that we definitely use language to our own advantage to promote our own national development for sustainability and also to ensure that our languages or these indigenous languages do not become extinct in the next century. You and I may be able to speak Mandinka today. It may survive the next century. But some of the other indigenous languages, like Manjago, may be extinct in the next 100 years, right? Like Karoninka may be extinct in the next 100 years. Like which other uh, indigenous language? Why I'm using these examples is because some of us 
are speaking more foreign languages than our indigenous languages. And with time, if a language is not actually used or spoken, most of the time, you know what it means. And you realize that so many people have lost their identity because their own identity is not that which they are today because of migration, assimilation, and not being able to speak that language that their own forefathers more or less uh, were able to speak. And you would see that today, somebody may be a Bojan. Well, you may not be able to speak Mandinka or Jola. I'm not saying Bojan is for Mandinkas and Jolas, but that is just an example, right? All they can speak is maybe English and another language based on settlement, based on where they are. And uh, we know about it. I don't need to go further because you know people that are able, who are not able to speak their own indigenous language. Right, so it's important that uh, we promote our indigenous languages, use them so that they do not die, they do not become extinct. And I know that to do that, we must start studying some of these languages in our institutions. That is why I again would appeal that we definitely have institutes of language studies in our tertiary institutions, even at secondary level, at primary level, it is important so that people will know the importance of language. In as much as we are into a STEM education, science, you know, technology, um, and so on and so forth, we should not forget languages because language is who we are, is our identity, is our culture. And it definitely says a lot about you and I. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you.